Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited Q4 and FY22 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabrar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited Q4 and FY22 earnings conference call. We have with us today on this call, Mr. Tarun Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Samir Sinha, CEO Sugar Business Group, as well as other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and the statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was sent to everybody earlier. I would like to also emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management following an interactive question and answer session. I will now request Mr. Tarun Soni to open the call. Over to you, sir. Bishop, thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q4 and financial year end fiscal 22 earnings conference call for Triveni Engineering and Industries Limited. Delighted to be able to speak to you today. The company has delivered extraordinary results at the end of the year. All the businesses have contributed significantly towards the profitability of the company. Triveni registered the highest ever annual profitability with the PBT increasing by 24.8% year on year to 574 crores. Profit after tax grew a shade under 44% and stood at 424 crores. The board, in its meeting that ended on Saturday, has declared a final dividend of two rupees per equity share, or 200%, for the fiscal year 21-22. If the final dividend is approved, this will take the total dividend for the year up to 3.25 rupees per equity share. The net turnover for the company, however, declined by approximately 8% in fiscal 22, and also in the current quarter. And this was driven by the sugar segment, where lower sales volumes of 23 and 29% um, were the main contributing factor in the aforesaid periods. It is important to note that for the sugar year under review, sugar year 22, the company has not exported any sugar this year, whereas in the previous sugar year we did, we had record exports uh, nearing about 185, 890,000 tons. A rather substantial amount of sugar was exported at that point in time. The other segments registered an increase in turnover in fiscal 22 in the current, and as well as in the current quarter. Turning to the sugar business, I'm happy to report the crushing continues at three of the seven sugar units as we speak today. And the total crush as on the 13th of May was 8.2 million tons with a gross recovery of 11.67%. The diversion of sugar to ethanol in sugar season 21-22 is estimated at 93,000 tons against 75,000 tons in the previous season. The increase in net turnover and profitability of the alcohol business improved by 30 and 48 percent respectively during fiscal 22 and were driven by increasing sales volumes and higher realizations as well as better efficiencies. The PBIT for the aggregate company for the alcohol and sugar segments grew by 13 and 14 percent respectively. Higher domestic sugar prices of 8 percent in the current quarter and 7 percent for the entire year have helped improve sugar operations substantially. 
in respect to the distillery operations, both sales volumes and higher realization prices have contributed to the increase in profitability. On the 4th of April 2022, just after the fiscal year had ended, the company commenced operations of its new multi-feed distillery at Milekna Ryanpur, which has a capacity of 160 kiloliters per day. I'm also happy to report that this facility operated for a few days um, fortnight on juice, which was the first uh, of the distilleries at Sreveni to have utilized juice for the manufacture of ethanol. The company has now achieved an overall capacity of 520 kiloliters per day as, I, as we speak today with the enhancement of operations at the distillery at Sabitkar, which has increased from 160 KLPD to 200 KLPD. The highlights of the engineering business are equally impressive in our opinion. The, business, the engineering business has reported a 12% increase in turnover driven primarily by the power transmission business in a year that was uh, fraught with, with challenges and especially a six to eight week shutdown because of COVID, the Delta variant, as we remember in Q1 of the fiscal year under review. Both the power transmission and the water business have registered a marked improvement in profitability. The engineering businesses at an aggregate level reported strong revenue growth increase of 16 and 25 percent and an increase in profitability of 41 and 2 percent during the year and, and, the, and the current quarter over corresponding periods. The power transmission was the key driver with the profitability increasing by 57 percent year on year. Uh, which is quite a substantial incre increase in, in profitability growth. The turnover of the uh, transmission business also grew at above 40%. The outstanding order book as of the 31st of March 22 stood at 1,734 crores for the combined engineering businesses, a robust improvement from 1,078 crores a year before. On the 9th of May 22, the Board of Directors have decided to divest the company's entire shareholding in Sreveni Turbines Limited, aggregating to 21.85% of the equity share capital of Sreveni Turbines Limited, keeping in mind the objectives of inter alia locking, unlocking value for stakeholders, the timely monetization of non core assets unbundling of businesses and enabling the long-term succession planning and facilitation of focus management of the company. The proceeds from the disinvestment of equity shares of Treveni Turbines Limited are intended to be utilized for the growth and expansion for the businesses, as well as for rewarding shareholders of the company in compliance with applicable law subject, of course, to receipt of any approvals that may be relevant. Turning to the financial position of the company, the revenue for operations in the quarter under review Q4 improved year on year by 0.3% to 1,192 crores, and the EBITDA margin also grew by 1.7% to 177.66 crores. The total debt of the company as of the 31st of March is 1,503 crores against 944 crores as on March 31st, 2021, the previous year. It comprises of term loans of 396 crores and almost all loans are with interest subvention or at heavily subsidized rates of interest. The total debt as on the 31st of March is higher than the previous corresponding year due to higher sugar inventory levels with the company. Having said that, as you all know, during the course of this fiscal year, the debt rating by ICRA has been improved, and as a result, the overall cost of funds stood at 5% for fiscal 22, compared to 6.05% in the previous fiscal year. I'd like to now spend a few minutes talking to you about the agriculture, the sugar and distillery, and separately the engineering business segments, individual performance. 
Uh, turning to the sugar business, for the sugar season and ending up ending at 31st of March, the crush stood at 6.61 million tons versus 6.9 million tons in the previous year, so a shade lower. The recovery too was slightly lower at a gross level of 11.57%, which we believe is one of the highest in the state of Uttar Pradesh. It was 11.7% in the previous year, and therefore this year's performance for the sugar crushing season was 11 basis points down. Now, this was due to rains, unseasonal rains that we experienced in October, which, as you will all recall, resulted in a late start to the sugar season. It was very unfortunate. We also had um, flooding, vast flooding at one of our sugar factories at Millet Miranpur, where water was released from the dams in the Himalayas. Uh, and therefore, this led to a delayed start of the season. However, the catch-up in terms of recoveries has been extremely good. I'm personally very proud of the achievements in performance that we've had across the, the seven sugar units. As you know, and we've mentioned in the investor statement, for the sugar season, um, compared to the previous one, we expect approximately 20 basis points. In fact, we can even narrow it down to potentially 21 basis points, a decline year on year, which is very much uh, best in class and standard. And frankly speaking, given the massive heat wave that has occurred over North India and in Uttar Pradesh starting off in March and through the month of April, the performance is certainly uh, much better than our expectations uh, and a vast improvement on the state. So as of the 31st of March, while Treveni Engineering's performance year and year was down 11 basis points, the state's average was going down 60 basis points. So that just gives you a kind of flavor in terms of the improvement in performance. The lower sales volume that has happened over the course of the four end of the year is primarily due to lower monthly allocations, and it is also due to lower exports. Now, the monthly lower sales allocations, as you can understand, were naturally going to be lower when Maharashtra, mills in Maharashtra and Karnataka crushed more and produced more sugar. And therefore, on a proportional basis, we received slightly lower quotas month on month. The sugar inventory, as of the 31st of March 22, was 51.49 lakhs, so 50, 51 and a half lakh quintals, of which 40% of the sugar that remained was refined, which of course attracts a significantly improved and higher realization. It was valued at 32.7 rupees per kilo, whereas in the previous year, the stocks, as on the 31st of March 2021, were 47 and a half lakh quintals, so substantially lower, 4 lakh quintals lower, and that was valued at approximately 30 rupees per kilo. The co-generation operations, which includes our incidental co-generation, achieved external sales of 62.3 crores during fiscal 22, which is slightly lower than the 68.3 crores in fiscal 21, and primarily due to the lower operating days. And as I mentioned, we had a later start for the sugar season this year because of the rains. Looking at the industry scenario during sugar season 2021-22, the sugarcane area has increased by 3% year on year. And this has been reported by the various agricultural departments. The major increase has been witnessed in Maharashtra and Karnataka with a slight increase in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana due to good rainfall at the southwest ports. Of course, the reservoirs having ample water supply. I'd like to pause for a minute and tell you about very current feedback. This particular planting season, the reports that are coming in indicate that the increase in cane area for the country should be about a one and a half odd percent. However, we have been very successful in our campaign, which continues to date, and we hope that for Triveni, we will achieve an eight percent higher planting, and a, which will equate to a five percent higher area under cane. As you know, the area under cane includes ratoon and plant. Ratoon is the previous season's plant crop as well. And this would be a, a record in our books uh, 
for, for, for many years. Considering, turning back to the nation, considering an opening stock of 8.2 billion metric tons at, on the 1st of October 21, the estimated domestic consumption at Sreveni is 27.7 billion metric tons, including the pipeline, and sugar exports will enhance to at least 9.5 million metric tons. And therefore, the closing balance on the 30th of September is expected to be a record 6.6 .6 million metric tons, which is the lowest it has been for several years now. And that, in my opinion, points to a, uh, a very healthy sugarcane price as we enter into the large holiday season, uh, which, is really, which will be the month of October 2022. Our projection for this quarter and the next quarter is a slow movement upwards in terms of sugar price. Uh, and realizations as the, the remainder of the sugar exports take place uh, and as we have as the summer demand for sugar then follows through into the holiday season demand for sugar. Turning to the ethanol business, the oil marketing companies have so far allocated 425 crore liters of ethanol for supply in this year. The ethanol year, as you know, is December through November, and this is against a requirement of 459 crore liters to meet the 10% blending target. The average blending percentage in the country as of the 24th of April stood at 9.82%. So broadly speaking, 10%, which is, um, I think, uh, a, a great set of congratulations go out to the policymakers and to the various departments in the government uh, to ensure that we are meeting this, this ambitious target. We are, of course, on track uh, to advance towards 20% EBP levels by 2025. Um, of course, that target has been reduced from 2030 by the Honorable Prime Minister. And I think we are uh, certainly um, on our way to be able to achieve this target and beyond. There has been talk, as, as you know, about uh, flex fuel technology and flex fuel cars, and those things are very much underway, and that will lead to a far more robust system where the next um, points on discussion will have to be around um, pure ethanol, whether it be E100 or, or E85 or, or, or the like. Turning to the international sugar scenario, the prospects for the 2023 season uh, now indicate a balanced market. When I had spoken to you previously, we were looking at approximately 3 million tons of deficit globally. However, there has been um, an enhancement of numbers coming primarily from India and also from Thailand and from a couple of other countries. But India and then Thailand are primarily responsible for the, uh, the elimination of the, the sugar surplus. Yet, we see that in Brazil, uh, there is more diversion towards ethanol, sugarcane towards ethanol, which bodes very well for the next sugar year uh, and as we go into it. Uh, it also has been a part of the reason why we've had uh, resilience in the markets as far as raw and white sugar is concerned. And the prices have withheld, withheld uh, quite nicely uh, over this fairly rocky period that has been influenced by all sorts of global parameters over the last six to eight weeks. Uh, as I mentioned, Thailand, Thailand, the Thai crop has, in, in, has been increased very recently to upwards to 11.5 million tons. It was previously forecast at 10.3 million metric tons. Global sugar prices have just softened a touch uh, and now trade on the 13th of May traded at 19.7 cents per pound for rows and 537.7 tons, dollars per ton, um, for whites. Our alcohol business had a slight reduction in terms of the production, and this was due to two shutdowns that happened due to NGT in, uh, and for, I'm sorry, for the commission for air quality, sorry, commission for air quality that happened, uh, influencing the NCR area. Uh, however, those were then relaxed and we've gone back to full levels of production. Having said that, our sales volumes for quarter on quarter increased quite dramatically by 24%. The highest sales volume and realizations actually for the company. Ethanol produced from really heavy molasses 
instituted 83% and 93% of sales volume in the current year and current quarter against 55 and 99 in the corresponding period to the previous year. The company has, under its alcoholic beverages vertical, started producing Indian-made Indian liquor towards the end of Q3 fiscal 21 at its bottling facility in the premises of the existing distillery plant at Muzaffadanga. This is a forward integration of the business. As a result, fiscal 22 performance is not directly comparable with fiscal 21 performance because it has been clubbed together. I've spoken about the new distillery at Milak Ranpur, District Rampur, which has been commissioned on the 4th of April 22. The company has also announced its operations at Sabitgarh upwards to 200 KLPD from 160 KLPD. The additional grain-based facility of 60 KLPD, which is being set up at our alcochemical complex in Muzaffarnagar, will be commissioned within the first quarter of this year, within the next few weeks, as we had forecast and spoken to you. And this will take the distillery capacity of the company up to 580 KLPD. The further expansions that have already been declared, and I've spoken to you about it, of distillation capacity, are uh, awaiting the necessary statutory clearances, and we're on track for enhancing our capacity to 660 KLPD by July 22 through our plan of low capital cost and incidental expansion and some deep bottom making. Turning very quickly to our engineering businesses, looking first at our power transmission business, we've had record revenues and profitability in fiscal 22. The revenue growth was, bit, was, was witnessed across all business segments and in ex export markets, and this was despite a seven to eight week shutdown that we had due to the Delta variant in the first quarter of the last fiscal year. The higher profitability was primarily due to overall cost control and operating leverage, which stemmed from higher revenues. The outstanding order book as of the 31st of March stood at 221 crores, which included some long duration orders of 111 crores. The difference between which we hope to be able to execute in a short period of time, potentially six to seven months. The board has approved a capex of 80 crores for the power transmission business, which is primarily for a new factory which will be established in Mysore, plant and machinery and equipment, and this should be complete by March 23. Turning quickly to the water business, the water business has also achieved a fantastic set of numbers, and on a consolidated basis, which includes our SPV at Mathura, uh, this was awarded, and of course at Pali, we have achieved a 25% growth, growth in revenues in the quarter under review. The profitability is higher due to better cost control and a very efficient project execution as things turn to normalcy. And as I had mentioned in previous quarters, we were waiting for these COVID lockdowns to abate. Uh, and once they have abated, the business has gone down to normal. The availability of manpower has not been in question, etc. We've been able to execute projects with great speed, and the impact of that is shown on our financial statements. The company is expecting robust order booking in fiscal 23, and it is well placed in certain bids that are being currently evaluated. The outstanding order book on the 31st of March stood at 1,513 crores, which included 940 crores towards O&M which are over a longer period of time. Before I turn to the outlook for the sugar business and engineering business, I do want to mention that the board, in its meeting last week, has also sanctioned 130 crores of investment in our sugar business. And this will be taking place at our factories in Katoli, Deoband, and Sabitgarh, and is scheduled to be complete by October 22. The primary purpose of this investment is modernization. We, which includes the improvement of processes uh, equating to a reduction in losses at these plants. It also will ensure that we achieve higher crush rates at all these factories well within our registered capacities.
In addition, there is investment included <laughs> in terms of improving the quality of sugar, where the urban factory will be converted into a refined plant, and we will be doubling the output of the pharmaceutical plant at our sugar factory in Samadgarh. I'd like to briefly touch upon the outlook of the sugar business and the engineering businesses. It is estimated, as I had mentioned, that for this sugar year, sugar year 22, we will be approximately 20 to 21 basis points lower in terms of gross recovery compared to the previous year. And this is primarily due to the late start of the factories and the massive heat wave that we've had, very unprecedented weather conditions and weather patterns that we've had this year. Um, however, Uttar Pradesh being one of the most productive sugar growing areas, we expect much higher sugarcane availability for the remaining and a much higher crush as we go into the sugar season 23. And this has been primarily due to the uh, our very successful planting campaign, which will translate as we hope, to a much better drawl in the coming season. I, I had mentioned that we will end this sugar year with inventories just higher than 6 million metric tons in the country, and it is our belief that we will see um, equally robust sugar pricing going forward with slight improvements in pricing over the next few months going through to the holiday season in October, November of this calendar year. Turning to the engineering business, the power transmission business has clearly indicated that the domestic economy has shown great signs of growth uh, and through our increased order book. However, it is not just the domestic economy. We have received excellent orders from global OEMs as well, uh, and we're seeing uh, uh, excellent growth in those businesses, which we hope to capitalize, to capitalize on as we move forward into fiscal 23. Uh, the growth in domestically has primarily been due to capital expenditure in power, steel, refineries and oil and gas, fertilizer, cement, sugar, and mining. These are the primary areas where we've seen uh, a um, substantial order for people. Turning to the water business, I think the company, as I mentioned, has participated in a significant number of tenders, a lot of which are pending finalization, and we anticipate in the next few quarters, we will be having the finalization and conclusion of those contracts, and the endeavor, of course, is that we're successful in many of them. We're well positioned with respect to our past bids that, I, that we expect to be finalized over the next few quarters. Uh, the demand, of course, for water in the country has expanded quite dramatically. The crisis is not just domestic, but it is also uh, uh, global, frankly speaking. Uh, water is seriously undervalued, and with proper incentives that are now being put into place, we expect a robust ecosystem to exist domestically and internationally. The reason I mention internationally is, as you know, we won a, an order in the Maldives um, in the last, uh, last fiscal year, and we're certainly looking at a few other markets to be able to execute uh, our water business orders in, 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 in sort of South Asia and Southeast Asia. Thank you very much. I'd now like to open the floor for some questions. Thank you very much. We now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Manial from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just have a few questions. Uh, uh, one is on the distillery capacity. Uh, I believe uh, once uh, your uh, capacity uh, get commissioned, uh, the full capacity get commissioned, uh, you would be able to produce approximately 22 uh, crore liters of ethanol. And uh, given the fact that uh, the area under the Sugarcane is increasing significantly, and 
simultaneously you are expecting a higher planting so is isn't it the fact that you are capacities are below par in terms of distillery uh, uh, given the fact that country level productions are also going higher so uh, won't uh, uh, it be required to sort of uh, increase the capacities of ethanol uh, even further from here excellent question so let me take it one by one uh, it, you see your your the capacity number that you are looking at depends on what your feed stock is <laughs> with respect to be heavy molasses we believe we have ample capacity and extra additional capacity at Treveni with the 660 KLPD. We also, with the 660 KLPD, have some capacity to be able to process cane juice during the season. However, the economics of juice are something that is still under question. I anticipate that moving into the next molasses year, the next ethanol year, there may very well be indications by the government to enhance and to support the conversion of juice directly to uh, to sugar, uh, sorry, to uh, to ethanol. Um, but until that happens, I think this is something that we would be happy to sort of wait and watch. But we do have ample capacity at this particular point in time to be able to process our B heavy molasses. Right. Uh, just one uh, follow up on that. Uh, I think you have, uh, what I understand, you have not uh, also exported anything. So. Uh, uh, export has not uh, been done and uh, uh, even the juice uh, route uh, you, you mentioned that you will not be able to sort of take it uh, more prominently uh, what i believe isn't it like betting more on the sugar prices which which at this point in time looks that uh, you know there, there will not be any runaway price movement as far as sugar is concerned so i think sugar prices at this particular point in time are are fairly healthy and fairly robust uh, uh, at this time, well above 35 rupees, um, as you know. Now, the company has not exported any sugar because it has been unviable. In, in, in the years where there was an export subsidy and there were quotas given to each and every factory, there was commercial sense to be able to do it. Uh, in Uttar Pradesh, gain, especially because we get much higher premiumization and much higher value for our sugar, uh, we were not in a position to be able to competitively export sugar. The opportunity cost was too great, and therefore we did decided not to export sugar during this uh, uh, during this part of the of the sugar year. Now, going forward, when you're looking at uh, when your comment is, are you directly reliant on on sugarcane prices? Well, you know we are happy to review, and we've constantly reviewed, and we had applied for. Uh, many potential distilleries, and we will continue to explore it. But until the board makes a decision for any enhancement of distillery capacity, we can't really come back to you and talk about that. It's not that we won't be exploring it from time to time. Today, as far as juice is concerned, for an existing distillery that has been set up, it makes sense to have some capacity for juice. But to set up standalone distilleries for juice still requires an enhancement of your price of your ethanol price from juice. And therefore, as a result, it is our view that having the sugar, especially the quantum of refined sugar and sugar that we have at Saveni makes more sense from profitability's perspective. Okay, okay. Uh, just uh, one more thing uh, on the, uh, I'll ask these two questions uh, uh, at the same time. Uh, what, uh, the, given the fact your uh, uh, inventory levels are somewhere around 5.2 uh, lakh tons, uh, uh, means by when we will be exhausted the current season inventory, and secondly, uh, on the uh, on the uh, Treveni turbine uh, Treveni turbines uh, uh, divestment is concerned, uh, where uh, specifically, if you can mention uh, where we will be utilizing the uh, money, uh, because uh, what I understand, uh, your uh, cost of debt is still far below, means uh, almost uh, five percent or below. Uh, then, uh, can it be assumed that it, uh, the the entire amount or the maximum amount will be utilized for the dividend payment? Let me answer the first part of your question. And I anticipate that the sugar that we have with us, uh, you've got the absolute figures on, on, on your fingertips, it uh, will be exhausted by us by November end. 
potentially first week of December. That would be the very outside, very much in line with the amount of stocks that exist in the country. So that is that is my estimation uh, as far as the sales of this sugar by, by November end hopefully would be our target. And I anticipate that we will start the sugar factories earlier this year compared to last year. For the second part of your question, I will hand over to our company secretary, Ms. Geeta Bella. So balance part of the uh, receipt will be used for rewarding the shareholders of the company in compliance with various uh, applicable laws and subject to the receipt of approvals. So this is what we propose to do. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permits, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Pratik from Systematics Group. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just a couple of questions. Firstly, uh, this 130 crores capex that you're doing uh, uh, on modernization of your sugar plants, does that also increase your uh, you know, crushing capacities at these plants or the crushing capacity remains the same? So, e excellent question. The, the, um, the permissible uh, crushing capacity remains the same, of course. However, our daily crushing capacity will certainly enhance at these three factories. So, we expect to crush much more on a daily basis, well within our authorized permissible limits. Okay, so means that uh, the uh, surplus or, or the additional gain that you're expecting because of higher harvesting and better yield that uh, we'll be able to finish that crushing well before the you know actual season ends and there should not be any drop in yield uh, or recovery rates at our end. No, we, we will be crushing at a higher rate, it's, uh, but our, our permissible, uh, what we are crushing at today is slightly below the permissible, the, the declared uh, crushing capacity. And with this modernization, we will certainly be touching our crushable rates. So within the same period of time, we will crush more cane at better efficiencies and at lower losses. Got that. And so secondly, if I see your uh, Q4 uh, distillery numbers, uh, the realization that you've uh, reported uh, for the distillery segment in this quarter is actually slightly below uh, the last quarter, uh, sorry, Q4 of last year. Uh, does that mean that we've done more of C heavy in this quarter or what has been the mix that has led to this uh, lower realization? So, so let me put it this way. The number over there would be on par with it. It probably is not the right number. It would be about 56 rupees, 60 pesos. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Second is because of the start of the IMIL segment, which is the country liquor segment, we are manufacturing more of ENA. Now, as you understand, we are utilizing more of our levy molasses and uh, transferring ENA to our country liquor business at controlled prices. That's impacted the, uh, the realization in this quarter versus last quarter. Okay, okay. so if uh, this uh, IMIL would have not been there, the realization would have been uh, have better been than last year. Yes. Understood. Okay, thanks, thanks a lot for uh, the clarification and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kostak Pavaskar from Sher Khan by BNP Pareba. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity, sir. Uh, my question is on your distillery uh, uh, business, uh, where your capacity, uh, uh, you know, will be around 22 crores per uh, liter. So my question is that uh, in FY23, what will be your utilization rate and how, uh, whether it will further improve in FY24? <clears throat> So that's right. You would notice that we started our Milak Narayanpur distillery in early April and uh, our Muzaffar Nagar distillery is expected to come in a few weeks, well within this quarter. So therefore, and they will take a little bit of time to stabilize. So therefore, as per the last board meeting, wherein we had mentioned that possibly in FY23, we might be ending at somewhere around 18 crore liters, give or take a little more. And but we'll go to 22 crore liters definitely in FY24 uh, with, with this with these capacities. Right, sir. Right, right. Uh, and uh, second question is on the capital expenditure. So uh, uh, as I understand that you would be doing around uh, 250 crores kind of a capex this year, and one is for the modernization, and uh, there is one uh, for the engineering business. 
So uh, going, uh, 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 what was the capex in FY22 uh, you did for the uh, uh, the distillery business, and whether there would be any add-on in the uh, uh, you know capex for distillery in current year? Um, I'm sorry, just repeat the last portion of your question, if you don't mind. Yeah, so uh, distillery business, how much was the capital capital expenditure uh, done in FY22 and whether there is uh, any add-on capex which need to be done uh, in the current fiscal FY22? Right, the approved capex, the largest portion of it was uh, in uh, uh, was under process in the last year. In terms of recognition, the bulk of it is it's going to happen in this fiscal year. So if you're looking at revenue, if you're talking about recognition, the recognition will happen in this year as the distilleries have been commissioned. The first one on the 4th of April, the next one will also be in this quarter and therefore all of it is happening in this fiscal year. However, in terms of expense, the broadest portion, the budget remains the same. There is no enhancement of the distillery budget, if that is what you're alluding to. As far as the sugar and engineering capex, it's not 250, it's 210 crores. 150, okay. sorry, 130 plus 80, which is 210 crores. Uh, and that is going to be spent in this fiscal year itself. Right. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. All the best for your future. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratiksha Daftari from Equiras Investments. Please go ahead. Pratiksha, may I request to unmute your line from your side and go ahead with the question, please? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, my first question was uh, grain based addition that we are, uh, you know, we are anticipating in this quarter. Given that the input prices have gone up uh, for grain-based distillery, uh, how do we look at uh, profitability for this uh, capacity? And how do we look at mix of uh, B-heavy, C-heavy, grain-based, and uh, juice for the uh, year? So uh, there are two parts to the question. So regarding the first portion of the increase in grain prices, now, one of the distilleries at Muzaffarnagar is primarily for potable, which is ENA, and therefore there is a pass-through of the grain pricing. The pricing of ENA has already moved up significantly, and we expect a further increase in that price. Second, uh, there are two options uh, within the grain uh, ethanol. The first option is that you buy damaged uh, grain from the market whose prices have gone up. And, but you get a much lower uh, ethanol price from that. And the second one is to go to FCI go-downs and uh, you know, get a, a rate which is about 3 rupees 95 pesos, say 4 rupees higher than the other uh, the damaged uh, uh, grain prices. And therefore, we are looking at that option, and we would uh, be in this month itself, we would be getting our orders for Milak Naranjo distilling on grain and procuring grain from FCI. In the meanwhile, there have been a lot of representations from the industry bodies, which represent the grain distilleries uh, to the government for an enhancement of rates of grain ethanol. Your second question uh, was about uh, how do we view the current ethanol pricing in terms of the feedstock which is available. Like the last time, we continue to hold that the heavy molasses remains the most viable. And despite uh, the grain taking a knock with, uh, with an increased feedstock pricing, it is, uh, would still be number two, followed by cane juice pricing. This is for setting up of new distilleries primarily on cane juice. If anybody has a surplus capacity, obviously, he will continue to cane juice. OK. And uh, what is the transfer price for molasses in this quarter? See, the transfer prices are based on uh, are, are based on market dynamics, and uh, let me say in this quarter the price uh, to the distillery was about 1,050 rupees in excess of that. The price at which uh, distillery consumed the molasses was 1,050 plus. Okay, and uh, this uh, this quarter we've seen employee costs go up significantly. Is there anything material to note here? 
No, there isn't anything material to note. Okay. This would be with the wage pool there is, area. There is, there is, of course, the, so there's, there's nothing, nothing uh, untoward to note. Uh, of course, there is a, uh, a wage board negotiation that happens and gets reflected from time to time, a few years on, and this increase reflects past dues for the wage board negotiations because that carries with it a, a few years uh, of back dues, um, and that is the number that you have noticed. Okay. And what is the cost of production for sugar in this quarter? If you could give vis a vis last quarter, last year, same quarter. Because of the increase in cane prices. It was effectively the increase in cane price, the 250 rupees. Oh. Broadly speaking, that's it for for the meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajesh Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, sir. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, so I had a, a question on the blending rate uh, specific to UP. While it is uh, well known that the India uh, pan India blending rate is hit close to 10 percent, what would be the blending rate in UP? And uh, the second question is an added question: is that a large part of the ethanol expansion is happening with the UP mills this year? So if you look at the diversion of 3.4 to 6 million tons, probably. A bulk of it will be happening in UP itself this year, and that too, uh, a large, uh, some part of it is juice based. So, given these dynamics, will it be a challenge, uh, challenge to sell the entire amount of ethanol uh, this year itself, or it's going to uh, like go into a two, two to three year kind of thing? Uh, I hope you got my question. What I'm trying to ask. No, I've understood your question perfectly. So, I have some difference of opinion in terms of your numbers, and let me start with that. I believe that 3.4 million tons is the number that we're anticipating for this year's diversion of sugar towards ethanol. For next year... Yeah, sugar, yeah, sugar yeah. I'm talking more about the yeah, yeah, financial year. It, for next year, it is anticipated to be 4.5 million metric tons of diversion. Broadly speaking, since the factories shut down, even... even uh, uh, the bulk of Uttar, I mean, Uttar Pradesh starts shutting down. Most of our diversion happens in the fiscal year in any case. And not all of it. Some of it does continue, of course, into the month of April. But by and large, uh, the expectation is that that number is the same. So I anticipate it to only increase up to 4.5 million on track for 6 million and potentially 6 million plus uh, as by 2025. By 2025, there is a very good chance that we will be doing more than 6 million tons. But next year, I think a reasonable number, given the distilleries that have been announced and that will be commissioned next year, or rather this year, in this fiscal year, I anticipate only a diversion of 4.5 million tons. Now, with respect to Uttar Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh is buying alcohol at a higher percentage, but certainly blending at 10%. Excellent. The excess, of course, is going to be supplied to outside the states, etc. The purpose of the government's discussions over the last few months has been acutely on this subject, that you have certain pockets of larger ethanol production. And as far as ethanol that is produced from sugarcane or its byproducts, it's going to be Uttar Pradesh, it is going to be Maharashtra, it's going to be Karnataka. This alcohol has to be exported and it is for consumption within a 12-month time span. The demand is there. The demand is a pan-country demand. The question that you're really asking is, is there a problem in terms of transportation of ethanol to other depots and other states uh, across the country? And my answer to that is that is the only way that we're going to achieve higher blending targets. And that is a distinct, that is something that will happen and we'll see it happen in, uh, the, uh, in the next uh, um, alcohol year. Okay, so you don't uh, perceive any challenge to sell these numbers, given the fact that you see that the alcohol will be transported to other states. So, so actually, there's, an, there's, a, there's a related question here. I mean, I mean the case, you talked about the grain uh, dynamics. I mean, does the freight of the uh, alcohol to be transported from UP to a state like, say, Assam, uh, come into play in the in the calculation of the, the grain-based uh, alcohol uh, which we're talking about? And if that comes into play and if the grain dynamics are looking better, in, in that case, will the grain equation be more viable? for uh, some other players, maybe? 
Uh, we, I didn't understand your question, but the point is that, you know, grain-based distilleries setting up in uh, Bihar and uh, West Bengal would be far better positioned to supply to Assam. That's point number one. And uh, there are uh, definitely deficit uh, uh, states. Also, what the government is doing or the OMCs are doing is that they are trying to put up aggregate depots where you aggregate within a state, let's say within UP, and uh, similar stations in other states, wherein uh, you uh, aggregate these uh, this ethanol and then transport it by railroads, which are trains and containerized uh, trains, uh, to the deficit states. That makes it much easier and also reduces the, uh, the turnaround time as well as the number of vehicles required for transporting these uh, this ethanol to far off states. But the answer to your question is within the state of Uttar Pradesh. Um, Ethanol made from grain or made from um, uh, sugarcane will have, will have the same amount of uh, transportation allowance by the OMCs. Okay. Got it. And, and just to okay. add to that, uh, we must remember that for our Milak Narayanpur distillery, we have signed up a, a bipartite agreement with the OMCs, which allows a preferential offtake from our distillery of 50% of our capacity. So preferential means, it does not mean in terms of uh, rates, but in terms of the offtake, prioritizing the offtake. Which OMC is this? Can, can that be shared? Oh, no, no, it, it's all, all the three OMCs, the government OMCs. Oh, oh, all the three. Okay. So and just one uh, question, if I can squeeze in on the sugar side. Uh, we are uh, hearing from uh, ISMA that there is a panel which has been mooted to, to talk about sugarcane farmers to choose buyers. So this is against the uh, the normal catchment area concept that we're familiar with in UP. Uh, is that a possibility in the future? Because at some stage the uh, the sugar production will fall so much uh, for, for for the few larger players in UP. Uh, that it may be uh, a, a bit of a lopsided equation between Maharashtra and UP in terms of sugar and alcohol. No, no, I think you're uh, jumping ahead of the gun. Uh, this was an article that came out a few days ago, and the agency in question was CACP, not ISMA. Okay. Number one, which is the Commission of Agricultural Costs and Prices, uh, ISMA being the agency for the, the association for the private sector association for Indian sugar millers. Uh, and again, this is something that came about as a potential recommendation from that body. This is certainly nothing that uh, ISMA is talking about. Um, I'm happy to share my personal views with you offline rather than take up time on this call on uh, the impact of that. But let me say it is nowhere near as dire. It is nowhere near as dire. Uh, as what you're what, as what you're contemplating, but I don't think it will happen. Number one, I don't think it will happen. But even if it were to, it is certainly not that dire. So, uh, which is uh, can I ask one more question? So basically, uh, if if you look at the numbers, I mean, if you look at a, a, a scenario whereby a uh, large number of companies are expanding in alcohol so much, so these companies will be selling much less sugar uh, from as as to what they were selling earlier in terms of the quotas. So where will that sugar come from in UP? Basic question. There, there's plenty of production. UP produces much more sugar than it certainly consumes. And the quantity of sugar being produced by the nation, despite diversion to alcohol, despite exports, is substantial. And therefore, there is no, you know, the, the, the scenario that you're talking, talking about of a shortage is, is certainly not foreseen. Not in UP and not in any other part of the country. Okay. I was talking only about UP, actually. Is there going to be a lopsided scenario by which Maharashtra and Karnataka, Karnataka will be surplus in sugar and UP will be deficit in sugar? That kind of a scenario. Absolutely not. No. no. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. A request to all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Iyash Agarwal. From GM Financial Services, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. good afternoon and congrats on a good set of numbers. So, you know, I had a question with respect to the sugar industry. So, this uh, sugar season, obviously, we've had nine, nine and a half million ton of possible exports, and that's why we've been able to reduce the sugar inventories. Uh, 
the question is now next to the season uh, with only an additional million ton that you spoke about uh, being diverted to ethanol a uh, export figure of about about 7 to 8 million ton would be needed uh, for for the industry to be at parity in terms of inventory now uh, isn't that a, a little concerning or or are we uh, thinking a little too ahead uh, in terms of the outlook for sugar prices come the next calendar year okay excellent question i don't think it's a cause of concern and here and here's why okay firstly your mathematics is spot on um with, we are seeing post covid we're seeing a further increase in terms of consumption you must factor that in as well there's been a big jump in consumption ever since covid has abated and i think that that will continue perhaps not with the energy that the the jump that has happened this year but it will certainly improve and in, in, and, and and go above 28 million tons in the next sugar year that's point one to consider the second of course is that there'll be 1 million tons extra that will be diverted towards ethanol however we will still have we've had record planting the question then comes to what is the yield and here the rainfall and weather patterns will play a very very big uh, role now um, last year the weather patterns especially across central india and portions of south india were ideal in fact never have been seen before in the last two decades and therefore the yields were extraordinary weather based really uh, and, and you've had, as a consequence, a lot of sugar cane that has been produced in Maharashtra and, say, North Karnataka. Uh, that has contributed to this rise. Um, now, next year, uh, it can happen. It can't happen. IMDB is, is currently forecasting a, a normal monsoon. So even if you assume that you will have excellent output in terms of sugar cane, you will need to have a robust export program. The message, as far as... Krishi Bhavan, the Ministry of Food is concerned, is that they are happy with the industry going ahead and exporting as much as they like. In fact, if you remember, there was an article that came out somewhere towards the end of March, which questioned, there was some commentator that questioned whether the government would either pass any negative commentary or any type of comment on the total quantum of sugar that will be exported from India. And there were some concerns, at least for two or three days, until the Ministry of Food came out in a statement and clarified that they had no such targets and they were happy with the export program continuing. While they, while they didn't announce the target, they implied that the total quantum of exports that needed to take place um, was something that was not an issue to the government. Now, moving into next year, especially as we're now into the second half of this sugar year, we're seeing that export contracts will continue. We've already surpassed 8.4 million tons of contracted value, and I suspect that we will certainly touch and achieve total exports of 9.5 million tons. It could even be a little bit higher, but, uh, but from a conservative perspective, we have forecast 9.5 million tons of export. I do believe that with, uh, during this period, we will enter into aggressive contracts for the next sugar year. The news that is coming out from other parts of the world, especially Brazil, which is the real, uh, which, which is the largest exporter of sugar into global markets, is a massive diversion, a more significant increase in diversion of sugar towards their ethanol program. Um, India will certainly benefit. The other thing is that India has been in export markets for the last, the question is, India has to export sugar, you're right. The second part of the question that I'm asking or I'm answering is that where will all that sugar go? If India is to export six, seven million tons next year, A, I think it is achievable. And the reason why it's achievable is because we have found homes. India has been exporting consistently sugar for the last few years to Sri Lanka, to Bangladesh, to Afghanistan, even Iran. We've been exporting to the West in terms of the Middle East and through the Middle East across East Africa. We have also been exporting large quantums of sugar to Indonesia and to Myanmar. So we have found homes for export of our sugar. Um, the, the movement in freight, the hikes and shortages in freight have really helped us in our export campaign. And I think as a, a lot of these buyers in these countries are spot buyers. So the challenge, of course, in terms of entering into 
long-term contracts with nations far away is something that is a bit more frightening than entering into a contract with India where the supply can be at least 30 to 40 days shorter in terms of physical delivery. And that's why I believe that not only will India export, but India will export to the same old markets where Indian sugar is found at home. Got it. Got it. Sure. Sure. So, you know, thanks for the elaborate uh, reply. And now, uh, secondly, now, you know, we, we, you know, someone spoke about the increase in raw material costs for grains. Now, I believe there is some bit of uh, hike announced in the grain-based ethanol uh, prices as well. Uh, what is the... Uh, or, or the derivative benefit that uh, the, the sugar ethanol industry could get. So can there be a price increase in ethanol for us also? And if there is no price increase in ethanol, would it make sense for us to convert uh, you know, to ENA and, and, and gain benefit uh, of the higher realization? So is, is that uh, something in the right direction that we're thinking? So you've, you've, you've asked a, a very complicated question, uh, actually. The, the fact of the matter is, we at Triveni are, are, are now manufacturers of ethanol, both from sugar and its byproducts, molasses, as well as grain. So we're on both sides. Now, while grain, right now, no price has gone up. There's only been one declared price for everything. The grain prices have enhanced, and there was somebody else who asked a question, and my colleague answered it about what our strategy is. Grain procured from the Food Corporation of India is always sold at a standard price. That price has not that that price has not gone up. Okay. And neither has the price of ethanol that is made from SCI grain. So yes. Basically, the lower price is of split grain that is bought from other markets in Mondays, and that price, of course, has certainly grown up. But our focus is on grain that is purchased from the FCI. Now, that's answering part of your question. The other part of your question is, should you, how does it impact, how does the movement in grain and any possible enhancement in uh, ethanol manufactured from grain impact ethanol manufactured from sugar. Yes, of course, if one goes up, it negatively impacts the other. That is certainly there. Um, we will ensure that we will move towards a scenario where we can, we are ambivalent to the raw material. So our distillery in Milakna Rayanpur, for example, is a dual feed distillery. It can use molasses and juice on one side. It can also use grain on the other side. And that type of movement, and we really, pretty much led the way as far as that is concerned on such a large scale. And that type of movement is what gives you optionality and flexibility, whereas you only then look at your bottom line in making these decisions. Got it. Got it. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll come back with you. Thank you. Thank you. We request all the participants to register to two questions per participant. The next question is from the line of Mr. Resham Jain from DSP Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Mr. Jain, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Am I audible? No? Yes. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, good afternoon and uh, congratulations. I think uh, unlocking shareholders' value has been a uh, demand since quite a lot. Uh, uh, quite some time. I think uh, this has been a uh, good uh, decision overall. So uh, congrats on that. Very few companies have been able to unlock value like this. So uh, so that's first one. Uh, second is um, uh, on, on various capexes which you're doing now, the 130 crore sugar capex and then 80 crore in uh, the engineering business. And I think uh, after this divestment, you may further invest in various businesses. How do you see the uh, kind of uh, payback or the return ratios in all these businesses? If you can just uh, give a sense on, let's say, this 130 and 80 crores, how are you looking at uh, the return ratios from these investments? Thanks. That's the only question from my side. I'll hand this question over to our company secretary to answer. Yeah, so as far as this, you know, uh, compensating the, uh, rewarding the shareholders, uh, uh, we'll definitely consider as, at the appropriate time, subject to the relevant approval, uh, uh, the proceeds of, uh, for rewarding the shareholders of the company in compliance with the applicable laws. So at this point of time, it is difficult to say how much, but it's, uh, it, uh, as the board will approve, uh, sorry, we'll be able sorry, to my question was not that. My question was this capexes which you're doing, 
like 130 crore capex in the sugar business 80 crore in uh, the engineering business what kind of return expectations one should have from these investments it was right. question. So, yeah that, that was um, i'm sorry i misunderstood your question i think we you know at at Treveni, we certainly look at uh, uh, double digit um, returns and uh, a payback uh, uh, within four to four and a half years. So we're looking at, in fact, for these investments, we're looking at less than three years payback with values higher, with around about 20 to 21%. Okay, right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nagendra from GrowTex Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just a couple of questions on the regulation side. So, no, again, uh, sorry to interrupt you. You're sounding a little soft. May I request you to speak louder, please? Yeah, is it better now? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. So, just wanted to understand this government quota thing. You uh, mentioning the lower allocation to the company was the primary reason for the lower volume. So, uh, in case the government keep allotting a lower quota, uh, will it will be a challenge for the company to maintain the sugar revenue going forward, or is there any other mechanism company has to deal with this uh, allocation problem? And uh, so, yeah. I, let me answer that before we come to your next question. <laughs> you know, it, it it it's a function of total amount of sugar being produced in the country. Uh, and it's year on year because it's always comparable. So you know, when, when and you yourself are comparing two data points of this year versus the year before. In the year before, Uttar Pradesh produced a lot of sugar. The country produced relatively lower quantums, and therefore Uttar Pradesh's share and Triveni's share within Uttar Pradesh was thereby higher, and we received a certain allocation of quota to meet consumption. This year, while consumption has gone up, production has gone up much, much more. And the production has gone up much more in two states, Maharashtra and Karnataka primarily. And therefore, they have received a proportionately higher share of allocation. Consequently, Uttar Pradesh and Srivani has received a slightly lower, although our production is, has been very, very good this year as well. <coughs> Going forward, I think this scenario won't change. I mean, I, I find it highly unlikely that there's going to be another scenario where Uttar Pradesh suddenly feels under greater pressure in, in, in future years. So I think the, the, the possibility is much greater that our quota, especially with our enhanced crushing, etc., that we're forecasting, our quotas will improve as we go forward into the next fiscal and sugar year, not the other way around. Okay, uh, understood. Uh, so one more question on the policy regarding, uh, in case, uh, uh, like, uh, is there any cap by the government uh, so a company can divert only a limited amount of sugar to distillery or uh, is, uh, is it free decision by the company we can take whatever the amount it wants to divert uh, for the dis distillery production? Well, uh, the company has to set up a distillery that can absorb the capacity, but once established, you can divert as much of your rated capacity to ethanol. So there is no bound from the government, I say? No. No, uh, so, yeah, just a small question uh, on the realize, uh, margins of the distillery side. So is what the primary reason, uh, the transfer price was the primary reason for the lower margin in current quarter or is there some other reason also? No, but well, it's not comparable. As I mentioned in my opening remarks, the profitability of this quarter and year is not directly comparable to the previous year for two reasons. The first one, of course, is a higher transfer price from sugar. Uh, to the molasses, uh, uh, to the distillery segment. And the second one, of course, is the inclusion of Indian-made Indian liquor within our distillery segment, which is, of course, at a much more reduced price. Uh, the, the, the price of alcohol is a, is a far lower price, and therefore, that equates it. If you take out the IMIL, you would see a, a healthy increase in terms of the sales realization of uh, spirit year on year. So what was the revenue contribution this quarter from IMIL? It was about 12 and a half crores sales of sales. Okay. I think it is close to last quarter, right? Okay, that's all question from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I request all the participants, please restrict to two questions per participant. 
the next question is from the run of shailesh kanani from centrum broking limited please go ahead yeah uh, good afternoon everyone thanks for the opportunity uh, sir i had a question on the debt level uh, as i see yes. uh, there has been sharp move up move on the short term borrowing and uh, there is some, there has been increase in inventory as you rightly mentioned because there has been some uh, reduction in the trade payables as well so can you some throw some light on this and going ahead how this should pan out yeah uh, the increase in overall debt levels especially working capital is only on account of the higher inventories that we have uh, this year at the end of this uh, fiscal year versus uh, the last quarter or um, the, the better comparable would be uh, 31st of March 2021. And, and that is what's accounted for the increase. The debt levels and the interest rates are, are very much under control. As we sell up the sugar, of course, the, the, um, the, the um, working capital levels will substantially de decline. And I think um, if we're able to evacuate our sugar in a timely manner, you will see these uh, net debt levels and working capital levels decline rather substantially. And on trade, we have seen... Uh, and, uh, there's think, also one yeah. small issue that I would like you mm -hmm. to also consider, that this year, we have, uh, Traveni has paid its farmers 100% absolutely on time. And that's been a very important factor. The previous year, there was a lot of uncertainty and there were a few delays with respect to cane price payment. And therefore, the, the cash flow levels were... Um, Sorry, the the uh, the, debt the debt levels were slightly lower in the previous year versus this year. This year, of course, it is primarily because we have cleared a hundred percent of our team price payment as on time. Sir, uh, is it this respect to being uh, lower cane availability in the state of UP that we have taken this step to uh, shorten the period of payment to farmers? No, not at all. It's been the ability for the company to pay. Okay. Um, I think our farmers are very happy giving to us, even in years of past uh, where, where there has been a little bit of competition here or there. We found that our farmers are much more than happy because of our track record uh, and the work that we have done with our farmers to always supply cane to us. So that's not a concern of ours, really, at an operating level. But this year, the company... Um, uh, received fantastic quantums of cane and had the ability to pay and therefore completely cleared all of its cane price payments well within the prescribed list. Okay, so basically, uh, I just wanted to understand, so basically our interest outgo for the next year, that is, I think, we, we might be slightly on the higher side because of this, because ultimately our sales, that is the sugar realization and the volume, will depend upon the quota. So it would be, as you rightly said, it would be on the stack way. So, uh, interest outgo would be slightly higher than FI22. Is that a reasonable estimate, sir? Uh, sir, it will remain at the same level as uh, last year because okay. this year includes some uh, interest of uh, because of this uh, uh, some tax uh, interest on tax is also there of uh, five and a half crores or something like that, which will not, will not be there in 22, 23. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. So, sir, I, uh, part of my question was uh, similar to what earlier participant has asked about uh, overall sugar production in India. Uh, the whole structure uh, change in the industry has come with respect to declining inventory levels. Uh, now, I, I get, I hear you on the front that consumption is going from 26 to 27 this year and expected to go to 28, which is uh, in line with the long-term uh, average of the volume growth. But uh, as we know that Indian cost of production is far higher than our competitors in Brazil or Thailand. So in a scenario where are no external factors which help the Indian sugar, be it a supply issue or be it any external geographic uh, uh, problems or what, uh, what has brought opportunity for the Indian sugar. So in that case, next year, if there is a dip in uh, sugar, uh, sorry to interrupt yeah. but your voice is breaking. May I request yeah. to in a better reception area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is it better now? Yes. Yeah. So basically what I'm trying to say is that uh, in case we do not have any external factors that aid Indian sugar export, uh, how do we see the scenario? Uh, do we expect government to intervene? We know that they can't uh, provide 
export subsidiary uh, subsidy but do they have any other tools at their disposal to help, help the sugar industry i just wanted to know that from your view well i think the government has all the tools but uh, okay. besides subsidy of course things are things are limited um we do uh, as you know have a quota system in place which has worked very very effectively right we also have an msp in place right. by the central government so if your concern is will domestic prices tank if india is unable to export and if there are any exigencies in the in, in global markets well you have two very important um thresholds uh, that will not be crossed the first one being the quota system and the second one being the msp that is established by the government of india they do very important things and that gives a tremendous amount of confidence as far as domestic sugar pricing is concerned uh, and we have tested them and they have remained unbreached frankly speaking over the last few years since it has been implemented so it has been tried and tested now as far as indian exports are concerned i think from time to time these questions do come about yes there was a, a, a great deal of argument about uh, wto compliances etc etc and, and 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 that subject is still on board however uh, there there can there can certainly be ways for the government to assist in the future if required as of now the government felt that india could export sugar competitively into global markets which is why you are asking the question what will happen if india can't export competitively um, i think there are multiple things that can happen uh, in terms of assistance in 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 evacuating indian sugar um, and and that we'll have to see from time to time i don't want to uh, present any hypothetical scenarios at this point in time but i certainly don't think all the arrows are out of the uh, uh, have been shot to the bow Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vignesh Ayer, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Congratulations on a good set of numbers, in spite of the challenging circumstances. Uh, I just want to. I've got two questions. First is related to the water business first. So, if I'm not, uh, if I'm, uh, if I'm can recollect. Uh, in quarter 3 uh, we had posted some about a margin of around 15% of ebit in uh, quarter 3 fy22 uh, which has now come down to 8 8.5% so i just wanted to know uh, in you know overall what is what is the kind of ebit margin can we expect in water projects so we don't give you a, we don't give future numbers as far as future guidance as far as numbers is concerned however i would encourage you to look year on year performance on the uh, margin levels and profitability levels rather a quarter on quarter because in each and every quarter you, it's the revenue recognition is such that it could have slightly higher margins and slightly lower margins what is more reflective is the growth in terms of the annual performance of the business which has as you have seen has been quite robust okay uh fine uh another question i had is so uh, when i went to this presentation sugar we have 51 lakh quintal uh, inventory at average of 32.7 rupees a kg can you give me what is the spot rate of uh, sugar as of now no particular it's 35 rupees per kilo for um bold grain sugar 150s Oh, okay okay and you are expecting it to rise uh, rise slightly over the period of next two quarters right that is our internal estimation yes yeah 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 thank you that's all from us sure thank you the next question is from the line of harsh maheshwari from systematics group please go ahead hello yes hello good afternoon sir my question is related to this revenue turban shares uh two three questions you were so told that you will sell the stock next six months or by 31 by 2023 at 171 on stock exchange at minimum price of 171 so if price is not there of 171 how you will able to execute the block trade Floor price, which has been fixed by the board for for the uh, promoter, is 
and uh, the uh, uh, time limit has been given up to 31st march 2023 so yeah. so we'll see at the appropriate time and uh, we hope to uh, you know but uh, this is a binding contract and we'll continue with this uh, at 171 Yeah, our query is uh, very specific. You know, you have mentioned that uh, you will not sell. Your floor price would be one seventy one, and you will yeah. execute at the stock exchange. So the issue is that obviously you have mentioned that it would be after six months of the approval from the uh, in the EOGM and thirty uh, first March twenty three, which is later. So if one seventy one price is higher than one seventy one, there is no issue. You can always execute the exchange. But if price is lower than one seventy one. how you would able to comply with that then in that case you will have to go off market while you are seeking for a approval to do it at the exchange number 1 number 2 you also mention in your eogm notice page 7 that the promoter who is buying intercy they would uh, do it from their personal finances as well as they may do a monetization of some of the shares that are held by them in the company company means cement engineering so is the promoter also going to sell some cement engineering shares to acquire uh, cement turbines so these are my two specific queries yeah so uh, as we have mentioned in the explanatory statement that promoter may sell uh, his shares in in the cement engineering uh, to buy this stake in the cement turbine limited by way of intercity transfer uh, regarding your second question uh, this floor price is 171 minimum price and promoter will acquire the share that minimum price has been given by the board is 171 which is based on the fair valuation and this is the minimum price and outer time limit is 31st march 2023 so we'll see at the appropriate time if we are able to do it and board will reconsider it if if, if required and is there any time frame for manager stick sale of around 11% sorry sorry i couldn't get you can you just repeat is there any Time frame that you set up for stake uh, sale besides the promoter buying, maybe other stake sale of around 10 to 11 cent. Is there any time frame, or both the transaction would happen simultaneously? So at at present there is no time frame, but we are expecting that it will happen at the similar time. This is what we are expecting. Thank you, madam. I think uh, we will uh, will come back to you in the offline because still I think the transaction how to happen if it is less than 171 after six months. We don't have a what a proper answer for that so perhaps we will talk to you separately yeah offline you can take up these questions thank you thank you thank you and now hand the conference over to the management for closing <laughs> ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for joining us in uh, i suspect this is a record call for us well beyond the 1 hour uh, limit Uh, discussing the performance of uh, fiscal 22 uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon let me conclude by saying that i think we're poised extremely well in in both our business segments of sugar agriculture and engineering all the various various verticals are poised for significant growth within sugar we're looking at an enhancement of sugar price within our uh, distillery segment we're looking at capacity is coming on stream and giving us higher revenues and profitability within the part transmission business we're looking to grow from strength to strength to further record revenues and profitability with expanded uh, role in uh, in other geographies and global markets and within our water business we're anticipating the conclusion of of water tenders uh, that we have been waiting and anticipating through this covid period and our earnest hope of course is that we will be successful in those tenders so i hope that when we get back to you over the next few quarters we're able to to uh, provide even better news uh, on all these fronts thank you very much for taking the time this afternoon goodbye thank you very much on behalf of trimeni engineering industries limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines thank you